What are you trying to do? Who are you? What are your goals? Sit, sit. So if it was Italy, you would be exporting spaghetti for it. Wow. So you start small and you never know where it takes you. Sit. And what the hell? YouTube learners, get the things done. Sit. <laughs> I'm here in San Jose, the capital of uh, Costa Rica, with uh, Pedro Gutierrez, owner of Banana Code, a, an agency that is what, two years old, right? Yeah, quite fresh. Two years. This is the third year. Okay. Quite fresh. So, Pedro, why Banana? That's a good story. Um, in 2015, I was working in Limon, probably you visited, mm -hmm. and uh, I was working as a teacher of the university. And Limon has um, specific characteristics about um, how people get jobs, right? Um, when I was working there, I was 24 years old. I was pretty young in that moment. And I was uh, connecting a lot with the, with the students. Um, they were talking about the opportunities they had in that moment. Um, there were like three. Uh, start studying and migrate to San Jose to get opportunities for jobs, go to the banana fields and work there, and go to the narcotraffic system, which is probably the easier and the dangerous part, right? Um, uh, in Limon, the banana fields produce probably a lot of the banana that we export from Costa Rica. And uh, in that moment, I made a simulation of an agency being a teacher. Uh, so I was working with the guys in the, after five or six o'clock, like, hey guys, let's make a simulation about how does it work in the real life. And um, yeah, I will teach you things that uh, in the program of the university that doesn't exist right now, which is uh, Bootstrap and CSS, HTML, because what you learn at the university is more basics of the engineering, right? So two years later, I mean, I worked two years in a private company after that. And two years later, I started Banana Code. And I said like, well, probably the mission and the social responsibility I would love to do is generate employment in Limon, which is probably the connection I had in that moment. And I was like, that would be awesome if we can export Banana Code, not bananas, right? And create a new experience of um, jobs to this, uh, all, all these people. So the first batch of uh, guys that we uh, hired as an interns, uh, all of them, they were from Limon. From this, the same people that I uh, started teaching to, uh, they were the same uh, people that I hired the first time. So the connection is the fruit name, right? So Limon, yeah. why is it not Lim Limon code then? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's so, so different. Yeah, but the banana fields is like the main... Uh, uh, Source of income. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So they didn't want to go there. And you can find uh, a lot of young people working still there and working in restaurants at night or something like that. But yeah, the, the, we export a lot of banana to Europe and states and a lot of places. So I'd say like, yeah, let's export banana code. And that's the, that's why the name. So <laughs> if it was Italy, you would be exporting spaghetti code. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. All right. So just like me, your background is software development. Yeah. Right? Tell okay. me more about it. Like uh, which technologies uh, were your main before you decided to be an yeah. entrepreneur? And how much do you code nowadays? I started working with HTML, CSS, uh, basic JavaScript. Um, when I started my first job, it was at the university on the platform for the students' uh, management. And I was working in an open source uh, language that is not pretty popular uh, called Tikal. I think I don't remember exactly the name. It's not a, a good language. It's an experiment from a university in Spain. So we were not working with a commercial language. So I started working What could you do with the language? Is it server side? It was server side, yeah, yeah, yeah. But always the HTML and the CSS was part of the day to day. And I started getting in love with more the front end part. And I started developing skills in, in design. So I cracked Illustrator and a couple of software and I started developing some um, designs that I like to uh, develop at the work because they were not giving that job to the designers. It was like simple, uh, something pretty simple. And I was like, no, let me design something. I would present that to my boss and then I will program it. And I started getting in love with that part. So I'm not a big programmer. I just started working with that after uh, my teacher uh, adventure in Limon. I worked with JavaScript, basically uh, 
vanilla JavaScript, but not like full, full, full programming. It was more like uh, giving maintenance to a specific platform that only checking uh, JavaScript code inside some components. So I was not like uh, developing at all. Um, so I started getting more involved with the product uh, design, the product management, and I was spending my time all the time with the UX designers and all those guys. Um, so when I started working uh, in my own agency, which it was as a marketing agency the first time we started, um, as soon as I got the first job for software development, I made all the design and I made all the programming part as well. So after probably 10 or 8 websites, uh, I said no, I will design and I will outsource this to India, in that moment it was WordPress, um, and I will try to find a team here, right? So I just talked uh, programming probably in 2018, in November 2018, and I started focusing more on product development. You were an investor in at least one company, Avenida. Uh, yeah. How much did you invest? Why? This is more like uh, time, more than, than money, right? Um, the why is Banacode is trying to be the first uh, startup studio in Central America. So the investment part is after five o'clock, what we try to do is to develop as much as possible, to interview people, to spend all the time trying to make the market fit we are trying to do right now. Uh, so we have spent money. Last time we, uh, last year we invest like five grants. It's, it's a, a small amount of money, but it's more talking about all the time we are spending on the, on the product. Right now we made a pivot last week. So we are moving from a commission um, a model to a monthly fee model. So it's more as uh, time spending time in best work. <laughs> and why exactly this project do you want to spend time on? It was uh, an idea in 2018, I think. Uh, like, hey guys, probably in the future, uh, a lot of people will try to uh, start selling only on the internet and the malls are going to be virtual and things like that. So we started thinking about the marketplace. And um, Avenida is exactly that. Like, You go to the avenue and you find a lot of stores about whatever you, you want to find. Um, we started working that because of the timing. The pandemic started like that was the, the kickoff of the project. Like, hey, there's a lot of people trying to uh, hire us as an agency to develop an e-commerce, but they cannot afford it. So let's make a super simple and basic solution that they don't need to pay monthly. Only if they sell, we charge the 15% commission. And we got uh, 85 stores in three months or four months. Um, yeah, so after all the interviews we made with all these people, we found a different model that we are pivoting right now. Mm -hmm. And is it a successful project? It's working right now. Yeah, we have... Ch we have uh, with 80 plus uh, stores, it should be... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right now, the thing is, at the beginning, uh, the first three or four months, all these people, they were not using the platform because of any specific situations that if someone texts you on Instagram and they tell you, hey, I want to buy this right now and I can move the money right now in a bank transaction, uh, I, I will do it right now. So they just stopped moving their traffic to Avenida. So we started uh, wondering why is this happening? So we started all the interviews and after that, 10 stores were the top all of them were selling and the rest of the stores they were not selling. So we started interviewing all of them to see how we can make them use of it, right? So we, we made this pivot based on the whole interviews and the hours and hours of talking with the founders of different um, stores. So right now it's getting better, I think. Now you can tell me why you founded uh, Banana Code and why you decided to become an entrepreneur. Okay. Well, I think I have like 13 or 14 years as an entrepreneur in different fields. Um, I had a band for nine years and I, I I noticed like two years ago that it was a kind of entrepreneur uh, situation because we were like 10 people and spending money and flights and, and tours and things like that. But I learned a lot uh, how to manage people. What kind of band? Rock? Ska. Ska band. Yeah. Nice. I really, I really like Do you like a ska band? Yeah. One of my favorites. Definitely. Definitely the best one. And after that, um, I started another company of um, uh, concerts produce, uh, uh, 
management, managing artists and things like that. After the, the last job I had in the private uh, scene, I learned a lot from these guys. They were from Canada, from Toronto. And I visited Toronto a couple of times and I saw them like founders working so hard and I, I saw what they built and I said, well, this is really cool and it's so similar to the simulation I made when I was in Limon. Uh, what if I just tried to sell something by myself as a service? And in November of 2017, um, I started selling marketing. I didn't know anything about marketing, but my co-founder, he knows a lot. So I said, hey, I know about numbers and about management, about design. Uh, teach me what you know and let's start selling that. So we spent probably eight months selling only marketing. And one day I received a call like, hey, do you develop websites? And I, yes, banana code. In, what, in that moment, the name of the company, of the marketing company was another one. And I, I started selling as a banana code uh, project. Was it uh, difficult to start? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it was difficult because at least here in Costa Rica, uh, you need to have a kind of reputation. If you are going to sell something, they will, sh hey, show me your portfolio. I thought that's around the, around the world. That's the, the, um, the thing that you need to show. And what I started doing is selling cheap because that's the thing, right? You try to, to find portfolio. Okay, let's, well, how much do you have? Uh, 1,000. Okay, I can do it for that. Probably the first year when I was selling by myself, I sold like eight or ten websites like for less than two grants, uh, and that made my, my portfolio, right? I have a great story about it. Yeah. So once in Lisbon, a few years ago, I met uh, at the conference, I met uh, Trump's uh, chief marketeer. Oh, wow. Marketer. So, uh, Brad Parscale. And his story is, is pretty much the same. So, he bid, he bid it like... Uh, 1,000 mm -hmm. uh, to, to create a website for one of uh, Trump's construction projects. Okay. And uh, one by one, he was making those websites. He could compete with the New York uh, agencies because they were way more expensive. Correct. And then uh, he became uh, Trump's uh, chief marketer for mm -hmm. his presidential campaign and he made uh, $98 million. Wow. Wow. So, well, you start small totally. and you never know where it, where it takes you. That's yeah. the point. I remember that um, I was totally alone with Banana Code uh, until December of 2018. And one of the startups I was working with, uh, they raised like 15 grants and they, had, they said like, hey, let's, let's uh, hire someone that can help us with the React Native development. And I started recruiting someone and Alexis, which is the CTO, he applied for the, the recruitment process and I interviewed him. And he showed me a lot of things that he was built. And I talked with the guys and say, hey guys, I have the, the, the developer. He's gonna check the code and everything. And I remember that he got into his house for three days. I, I, I couldn't contact him. And after the third day, uh, it was on Mondays, he said, hey, I already finished everything that you are needing right now for starting people to, uh, pitching this. And what the hell? Did you and yeah, I, everything is working. It was a data over audio technology, and he showed me the application, and everything was uh, working pretty good. And I said like, Hey, what are you trying to do? Who are you? What are your goals? And he told me, Well, I have been trying to find someone to build something, but here in Costa Rica, I cannot find anyone. Everyone is just pretty good with their jobs, and they don't want to uh, start building something. Right? It looks like a very comfortable place. Yeah, warm, good roads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I talked with Alexis and I said, like, hey, let's do something. I'm trying to find an, uh, a partner. Uh, I can give you a 50% of my company if you want to jump in this adventure in a besting mode. And let's check how it goes. And probably two weeks later of that, uh, we got two projects with full engineering. Like we had to develop a lot of things, not WordPress. And uh, yeah, this is the third year. And, that and it was, was for uh, the investment of 15 grand? Uh, the 15 grand was for developing the first MVP of this company. Uh, he resolved all the technology thing about uh, consuming an SDK and things. I, I knew how to do that, but not probably at his, at his level. So the 15 grand was for developing uh, for at least three or two months more the MVP. So we hired two interns from Limon for that project. And we got hired for another project, which is the biggest uh, newspaper, digital newspaper here in Costa Rica. 
Uh, we hired two more guys and we started in um, the 7th of January, is the, the, the date we put of 2019. We started with three projects and we were six guys in that moment. And yeah, that was probably the best decision. Alexis is an incredible CTO, he knows a lot, he's a super geek guy. And, and yeah, right now we are 13 people and uh, we are developing more robust projects. Um, we are polishing all the processes, uh, but yeah, it has been so hard. Is it still hard? <laughs> is it is it difficult to do business in Costa Rica? Kind of. I think the the Costa Rican people. I don't know if that happens in Europe. Probably no. But here, all the time, any client they take like two or three months to take a decision. So it's so hard because I have been prospecting them. I have been showing them a lot of things. I have been even creating some wireframes to show them what are they trying to build. And after two or three months, they haven't take, taken the decision. So it's sometimes is, uh, I need to get some prospects, like at least 10 prospects. And after two or three months, only one closes or two close. So well, B2B sales is always slow, no matter where. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But speaking of Costa Rica, like uh, I don't know, bureaucracy or anything in that terms part, of that, doing business, or is it? Uh, is it? Uh, yeah, that part is hard. Part? That that part is hard because if you want to start something, uh, the social security, uh, you need to start paying from the day zero, right? So if you hire someone as a professional service and you have been working with that person for, let's say, six months regularly and you're paying regularly on a specific fee, automatically it turns into an employment relationship. And if the social security finds that you have been working with this person for six months, they will ask you for all the money of the six months. So if you have 13 people as me, and they find out that you have been working with them for two years, they will charge you all the money of the social security. So it's hard because you need to pay 26% if you are paying someone $1,000, you need to pay $260 in, in, on the top as a social security and the employee is going to, they will get 10% of those $1,000. So it's so hard. It's so, so hard. So they are, the specialty of the government is to close <laughs> entrepreneurs, like make them broke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so hard. That doesn't sound like a very favorable climate for, uh, no, but for there are, information technology services. Th there are specific uh, methods that you can do. We found, um, we incorporated uh, Banana Code in Delaware. We are charging everything outside that is from the States or Canada to Delaware. And we are only moving the salaries to Costa Rica. That way we are not making profit in Costa Rica. That's the way. I mean, I would love to be different, but it's not it is the same in, yeah. in many Eastern European countries, yeah. I must say. Where do you get your leads from? I need to be completely transparent. We haven't spent any penny in marketing. It's all time word of mouth, at least in Costa Rica. A lot of people that, hey, someone recommend you, me, uh, you, and I found your name in this website or this e-commerce, and I really want to uh, have a quote from you. Uh, but the, the, the big leads that we really want to connect with, like from States and Canada and Europe, it's, uh, it's more about how I can get connected with them uh, via LinkedIn or in different virtual events. Uh, even Clubhouse right now is, is uh, getting some uh, power there. But definitely it's all the time, like, how can I visit uh, those places in this case uh, we have been visiting Austin for two years last year it was like a pandemic situation but the idea is to go to as much events I can and start telling them our value proposition uh, like if you already raised money we can build your MVP and um, because I worked in Toronto uh, I found some friends that they were working for a specific startup and they hired us for that so right now we are using um, software called Cyber Leads, which uh, is an air table that they give you uh, 500 contacts of the make uh, decision makers of a specific agencies or startups that got founded in the last three years, uh, three months. So I'm connecting them, uh, seeing if we can uh, give them some value. I already send them a proposition or something like that. We see how it goes. What's the outcome of that? 
sometimes it's like uh, a good conversation with the CEO or, or the maker decision, uh, decision maker, I don't know, whomever it is. Um, but sometimes it's like, yeah, right now we don't need to outsource. Uh, it's something that we are, we are not thinking about right now. So what I try to do is like just be connected with them, see if they have any overflow that they can throw to us. Um, but I think that the what I have learned is that if I if I get some good relations uh, in the future, it, it it gets into an email that say, hey Pedro, I found something that probably is going to help you, and uh, probably they, they they need your services, and I receive that kind of um, emails every week or every month. So sometimes what I try to do is to like give value. If I can send whatever can help that founder or that uh, owner, uh, it's great. And in the future, they come back and say, hey guys, uh, probably we have something for you. And But yeah, it, it's all about networking. How can we give them value? Yeah, totally agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's okay. great. What you are doing is, is something super cool because I really want and I really love to travel and see how can we just sit 30 minutes and if I can give you something that can help you in that moment, that's something that is a, a small compromise that you in the future will say, hey, he helped me, I can give you a connection and that's... Yeah, networking is very important. It's that's so why I travel <coughs> to the locations where our customers yeah. are and I try to visit them regularly. Like yeah, I yeah. go twice a year to New York, uh, then I, um, I'm in touch with my uh, connections in Berlin. Cool. And it, uh, it all makes sense. Also, yeah, exactly. also, professional events help. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember last year I was traveling to Austin for the South by Southwest and it got canceled one week before I, I, I wanted to go there. Oh, uh, it was the first time I said, oh my God, yeah, I will go to all those workshops and it's probably all this amount of founders there that I can prospect and it didn't happen. <laughs> but, well, hopefully next year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Next year is going to be a different one. <laughs> How do you price your work? Uh, the price like an hour rate? And uh, well, the rates and how you calculate the price. Okay, yeah. What, we, what I try to do is every time I send a proposal, what I try to do is like, hey, this is the team you are hiring. This is the faces we are going to be working. This is the amount of weeks you are going to be hiring these resources in a specific. And what we try to do is to um, calculate the salary calculate the social security things and our profit, right? And um, I try to, to give to the client exactly the amount of weeks, the amount of resources and the total. And sometimes they they want like a discount or something like that. So there is where I need to uh, start working with our profit, right? So what we're trying to do is to uh, charge between 35 to 40 bucks an hour. Uh, we have been working between the 25 and the 28. So the idea to for 2021 is to raise to 35 to 40. Um, we have closed uh, two projects with that rate in the last two months. And the idea is to close at least 10 this year with that. But what we're trying to find is uh, four to six months projects, like to, to build an entire product pretty solid that we can move along the usability testing, the beta testing, and that we say, okay, this is ready for high traffic. So I think this is still cheap. I know that this is still cheap. It is pretty cheap, even compared to Eastern Europe, because yeah. other people I spoke with here in Costa Rica, they charge like 50, 60. Yeah, yeah. But, but you, you need portfolio for It's exactly the same situation as two years ago, but with a different amount. And definitely um, I have the confidence that we can uh, start charging like 60, 50 in at least one year and a half, something like that. Yeah, but it's, it's the process. <laughs> and uh, speaking of profit, what do you consider a good margin? I think uh, what I recommend to small entrepreneurs is that the 20% profit is good. But in software, I know that you can be working for more than 100% profit, 100 profit, right? Sometimes is uh, I have been talking with some friends and they're like, hey, I charge 400% profit sometimes. And, and sometimes it's not possible for me in my situation. But right now, the real numbers is that we have been getting the 50% profit in the last year. Uh, but yeah, the idea is to start increasing that. And sometimes it's just checking with the client, right? If what I try to do is not put the price to our work, it's put the price to the client. Because what we're going to build is different to McDonald's than a small owner, right? 
So I try to do that. Um, this is good. This is called value-based pricing. Yeah, it's exactly that. Like, uh, yeah, I know that I'm gonna build exactly the same thing for these guys for you, but for you is valuable. It's different the value, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's it's there's, positive. There is one more recommendation, by the way. Uh, one more one more recommendation that I heard is that you ask the customer what does it cost not to have this done. Yeah. And over this period of time, so let's say if you are not getting this done for the next half a year, correct? How much money do you lose? Yes, um, I remember last year in November, I had a discussion with a project with a client that we already developed something for them, and in that moment they said like, "Hey, it was a kind of automatic form uh, for an insurance company." I say, "Hey, uh, guys, how much is the same project but eight times? We have we need to do this for eight countries." And it's like, well, if this it cost uh, 12 grand, just make the, the, the make the maths, right? And it's like, no, but it's a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. And I remember that I, I came into a, a kind of board of directors meeting and say, hey, guys, if you want to compete against your biggest competitors, you need to know that they are investing in technology. If you are not investing hard in technology, probably you are not going to be the first in the, in the market, right? So... I try to move into that field and say, if you want the best, hire the best, but pay exactly how the best costs, right? So um, in that moment, they, they didn't accept the deal because it was a lot of money, but and it's a super big company, so I didn't understand that moment. So one of the lessons of 2020 was uh, how to say no, because in that moment, we were kind of desperate sometimes. But I said like, no guys, we cannot pay you 50 grand. We can pay you 20. And in that moment, I could accept in that moment, I said, no, we need to have a sustainable business and our price is 50, it's not 20. So yeah, that was a big lesson. Where are most of your customers located? Um, right now, I think it's Central America. I would love to say more in North America, but in Central America, we're working for uh, um, three, four clients in Costa Rica, one in El Salvador, one in the States, and one in Toronto right now. In El, Sal in El Salvador, is that uh, is it a startup too? Yeah, it's a startup. They are starting from, from zero right now. We are developing all the product. It's a dark warehouse uh, market, play market uh, supermarket. So the idea is that they want to uh, sell you exactly what you want if you want a specific apple or a specific piece of meat or whatever uh, they want you to ask you uh, ask that uh, uh, in the app or the website but you cannot visit the place it's a dark warehouse um, and it's super cool the name is keep um, they are uh, trying to um, I mean in El Salvador there is no Rappi or Uber Eats as strong as in this sector so they want to start working in that in the vertical and it's a super cool project so speaking of processes do you document them somewhere yeah yeah we use notion for everything is a knowledge based um, platform we use but all the time is like that okay hey guys uh, what happened here did we follow the process let's check the process or let's fix the process if it's not working that way so definitely we are small um, but as soon as we can get biggest client bigger clients uh, the process will get probably stronger and we'll be able to hire seniority, which is something that we are struggling right now. Our team is amazing, but definitely we need more seniority because they come and they put a lot of things in order, right? And the idea is to hire people that can teach us how to do specific things, right? Not to tell them what to do. But yeah, we're we are still small, I think. All right. And what roles do you have in the company? Once a month that we can see each other and all that stuff. But if, if with the last events, if we can go re full remote and we can have virtual events as well, that's great. But some say is, is um, yeah, it's pretty small. I mean, I have been talking with a lot of guys and they already work in, in big companies that they are paying a lot. Even if you are a junior, <laughs> there are companies paying you as a mid or a senior. I, I noticed that like one month ago, like how much are they paying? It's, it's a lot for a, people, a person that only has one year experience. So we are competing against salaries, not against like different things, right? And how much are the salaries? Yeah. So speaking of mid and junior, I think from a, from a junior is from the from one thousand to one to eighteen hundred, I think. Uh, mids are between the two two grants, two point five, 
and the seniors are going um, more than 3,000, 3,500, something like that. But yeah, the idea is that you can pay that, but the social security is the 26% in top of that so it's it's pretty hard to because what they really want is yeah it's uh, a freelance or is full with social security they're like no it's freelance well i'm not interested so that's that's the hardest part <laughs> mm-hmm. so it's yeah some say it's it's hard so everyone wants a full-time job uh, a full-time job is paying cash is uh, an option yeah. what, what i try to do is like hey guys uh if you because you're not coming to a specific office, you're not following a specific schedule because we really like to go that way, but you are only working for goals, uh, we can pay you all the cash, like full the money, right? And you only make um, uh, a bill because the, the IRS, not the IRS, but yes, the, the, the office here, they will ask you for that, but we can even pay you in TransferWise or PayPal from the state's uh, company. And if you want to make your movements to bring the money, that's up to you. We can do that because we are doing that with people in India and people in Argentina and things like that. So if you as a Costa Rican want us to pay you outside the country and you see how you can bring the money and you can get all the money, it's not a problem for us. But definitely as soon as you grow, uh, you need to have like everything in order with the government and things like that. So even sometimes if you want to work with a specific client, they ask you for all the papers. like. To see if you are really uh, by the law, following the law, right? <laughs> and is it easy to retain talent here? You know, that, that there isn't a specific thing that we we have been facing the last two years. People here, if you offer them a uh, stock option pool, they don't understand that. They don't know what's that, and because in Costa Rica, that's not part of the culture. We are trying to make that. We are trying to offer them like, hey guys, if you can grow with us, and give us value, you are going to be part of the party, giving you actions, uh, um, stocks every month. Um, so it has been a challenge with the people that we have already, like, hey guys, you have yeah, stocks. You, you are talking about shares, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's something that if you go to a startup in States, they will ask like, hey, is there a nice stock option pool? For, for but you are a service company, so yeah. is, is that different? Or do you want to be like a startup? I really want to to, to move that culture here. Like, hey guys, if you if you can help us uh, not paying you all the money that, that you're expecting, because we cannot, but we can give you a, a stock option pool for four years vesting. Uh, it's something that uh, by the time it has worked, Definitely, some some of the talent we have, they are staying because because they have uh, some stocks. But um, the idea is to start increasing more perks and start giving them the options to um, travel with us to Austin or to another specific uh, country. And if the thing right now is that if you want to go to Europe and stay there three months, you can do it. Right now, I don't know where are you. <laughs> if you are here in San Jose or if you are on the beach. It doesn't matter for us if you're working that's that's perfect so uh, that's one of the things that we have that the biggest company they don't have like they don't allow you to go outside the country uh, because you need to visit the office once a week or something like that we're trying to be more open to that like just uh, let us be part of your life instead uh, the other part right so it's hard but right now we have the talent do, do you offer any perks so right now we are we are um, right now we are we are trying to move into the medical uh, plan for a private uh, service uh, but yeah and we have been telling them all the time like we really want to fulfill the social security first because we know they want because every month they need to make us a bill and we can pay them if they don't do it we cannot pay them so the first thing we are trying to fix is the social security and as soon as we have that, uh, we can start uh, paying more things, uh, team buildings and things like that. Every town hall, uh, at the end of the month, we try to cover all the food, all the drinks and everything. And it's a small things that we, will, we really want to start increasing, uh, like the, the same device, the devices, the computers, like to uh, buy new ones and, and uh, things like that. But definitely it's part of the process because we have a lot of ideas, but we don't have the money yet. <laughs>
So speaking of women, uh, what's the gender balance in Banaco? We have a lot. We have a lot of, of, of women right now. We have uh, Pilar, Juliana, Jocelyn, Natalia, and Elka. And the rest of the team, we are um, we are six more guys. So it's 50-50 sometimes. And we are trying to get more, more women because, um, to be honest, from my position, they are they have more order, they have more uh, communication skills, and a lot of things I really like about that. So yeah, we we have a, a balanced team. <laughs> All right, what's your favorite project? Project, um, I think it's the, ra the the one that we are building right now from El Salvador, like the, this startup from from El Salvador that as a client, um, well Avenida, which is our small baby. Um, this one from El Salvador is because it's a uh, it's something that is innovation. I think it's part of the the new trends, uh, uh, the new trend of dark warehouse things, and it's a project from zero to hero. They are investing a lot of money. They are renting a new dark uh, warehouse and they are building that, and they are only expecting our tech in order to start. So I'm pretty excited about how it's going to be the launch. They're going to be doing uh, friends and family beta testing in May and they invite us to go to the Salvador to the lounge and everything. So I'm pretty excited about that because probably in a specific thing, it's a client with money that they can respect the times and they are giving us the, the, the freedom to do what we can do and we what we know. So I really like that because we started this in the first of December. Uh, they are super happy with all the projects we have been developing so far and uh, we are moving to the second phase right now which is the app we work the web uh, e-commerce right now we are moving to the app and um, I think that if you respect the process you can get a great great solid product and um, I really love that project because of that <laughs> all right. yeah. and who's your favorite customer <sighs> my favorite customer um, like the profile you say like the... uh, as you wish <laughs> It can be your ideal customer or your favorite customer from the existing ones. I think I, I, I'm gonna stay with with Kip because because of that, like they are the, the ideal profile of the customer we are trying to find. It's people that uh, they are professionals. They have been working in a specific niche for years, um, and they really made a lot of investigation about who will develop the applications and. Um, they took like two months uh, interviewing a lot of agencies. They told us that um, after they hired us, and um, they they really liked like the details and things and things like that. And and they really like how we can get involved with like giving them um, a lot of different um, advices. Uh, so if you have a client that they love that you are giving advices based on your experience, that's so valuable. Right, and I saw on a specific uh, post in Instagram last last week saying like, if you have a five grand client, they will give you a lot of things before they pay you, like a lot of comments and things. If you have a fifty grand client, we'll show. Just try to check. Yeah, so I, I really like that. <laughs> Definitely, this is for sure. <laughs> Are there any new uh, technologies or trends that you've been following? Um, I think we're we're moving. Uh, more into more deep into react native and, and react js um probably alexis is the best person to answer that part but what i know is that uh, he has been working um more with aws for the infrastructures we're working um and digital ocean as well which uh, they have been growing a lot um probably the next thing is about machine learning all, all these things like as soon as we have more data in the different projects we will start probably definitely definitely uh offering services about that we know a lot of people here in costa rica that they are good with machine learning python and and r um so that's probably something that we know that we need to do the homework there but we haven't had the time yet um, but I know that Alexis is trying to explore some, some positions there. And if we get a project with this field, we already have a team that can uh, work with us for that. But yeah, definitely it's something that we know that's happening. We know that it's something that we really need to do. And, um, and yeah, uh, I know that um, they are working with the React Native thing right now and, and React.js. Um, 
in the last two two weeks we have been moving with uh, PHP, which is not our favorite, but we need to offer a lot of different services. But yeah, I think that's that's pretty much for now. Uh, you told me you wanted to visit Ukraine. What have you heard about it? <clears throat> I think that I haven't heard a lot um, because of this mentor from Austin that he's working with people from Ukraine. Um, he has visited them like two times. Um, what I really like to do is to understand the culture, explore the food and the places. And um, I think as, as I feel when you are here that I really want to like say, say like, hey, let's go to the beach and explore places that I really know. That is something that I really appreciate. Like when, when people receive you and, and they are hosting you and uh, they can show you a lot of things that they have been living for all their life. Right. I think that's that's great because at the end of the day, uh, the capitalism is telling you that people is numbers. They are numbers and they are just making money. But I, I connect more with the people behind all that effort and how at the end of the day we are all chasing a dream or a specific goal. And if I can share time with people from different countries and different cultures and I can understand more to be how, how to be a worldwide uh, uh, person, citizen, that's great. I definitely can can um, can be so happy with having friends in different cultures, and if we can explore opportunities for work or building projects, I think that's great as well. But yeah, it's it's more for the from the human part, I think. All right, so yeah, feel free to visit anytime. Be my guest. Yeah, definitely. I would love to. I would love. To. I haven't gone to Europe, only America, only to states, Canada, and Central America. But I haven't gone to South and Europe, so I really want to visit. Definitely. <laughs> All right. And uh, this um, customer of yours from Austin, what does he say about working with the Ukrainian developers? He he really liked it. Uh, I have listened to Chris saying like... By any chance, do you know the company name in Ukraine? Oh, I don't or, or, I, or the city they're in? I don't remember exactly. I, I can check it in any chat, but I don't remember exactly the, the name. Um, but what he says is that they are super smart and they are pretty solid um, engineers. I connect with this guy uh, from Austin, from Chris, because he's trying to outsource from Costa Rica, not from Ukraine, because of the time zone and everything. He has been working with them for four years, I think, but he really wanted to outsource some projects here because he lived here like 15 years ago, and he really wanted to have a team here that he can visit and he can go to the beach and connect with that human part as well. I would call it lifestyle outsourcing. Yeah, 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 definitely. So, yeah, but he, he, he says that, that you're smart people and, and, and go-getters. And that's definitely something that I really want to explore. I've been trying to do development with Indian people, but they are more like YouTube learners. <laughs> but I really want to see um, if we can explore an opportunity in Ukraine, definitely. All right. And finally, what would you recommend from your experience to other founders? I think it's... Um, is the persistence like just keep going just uh, try to improve your habits your atomic habits sometimes you are so uh, um, tired about the routine sometimes uh, you need to be handling a lot of pressure about clients that are not paying or are not uh, closing but at the end if, if you are following a proposite uh, and a specific mission and a specific vision and it's connected more with the human part, like building a team and, and, and something that can impact a lot of people. Uh, definitely things are getting better every day. So last year <laughs> I thought like three or four times to stop working and just find a job and just relax for a couple of months and then come back. But I said like, no, 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 no. I have worked a lot. I have spent a lot of nights working hard. Uh, this is exactly what uh, a lot of people probably think when they are in this moment, in this valley of death. So this is the third year. What I have heard is that the third year is probably getting better in the whole structure. So definitely it's just pushing, 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 pushing and get the things done. That's a cool thing to write. It's exactly what, what you need to do. At the end, it's, it's the only thing that is uh, letting you move forward. Definitely. <laughs> That's for sure. All right. Thank you, Pedro. Thank it was a, an interesting conversation. I yeah. wish you all the luck with uh, with your projects and growing thank your you. team. And please uh, feel free to visit us in Ukraine. Yes, definitely. definitely. Whenever you can. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs>